from you, baby. Judge Jill Jakes and Judge Lewis Welsh preside where the issues are real. The issues are full. Superior Court. Heather, you look great. <laughs> we still on for tonight? I can't, Philip. I've got so much, Philip, I've got so much garbage piled up on my desk. I have to work tonight. Yeah, well, garbage is right if it's got to do with this guy Lorenzo. I don't get it, Heather. Why knock yourself out for him? You know he's guilty. Uh, well, that's for you and the DA to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. All I know is that Benjamin Lorenzo is entitled to a defense. Yeah, well, I'm entitled to spend a little time with my favorite lady. <laughs> now, how about Saturday night? You can't work Saturday night. I can't seem to say no to you. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. That's the cop who arrested me. What's my lawyer doing making so nice with him? Okay. The word around here is they're pretty hot and heavy. No kidding. All rise. Come to order. Superior Court is now in session. The Honorable Jill Jakes Judge presiding. Please be seated. Superior Court, case number 87-3916. The State versus Lorenzo. Benjamin Lorenzo has been charged with armed robbery and murder. If convicted, he could be sentenced to death. Counsel, if you are ready to proceed, I'll hear opening statements. Raul Espinosa for the prosecution. Linda Marquez's 15th anniversary began with a celebration and ended with a funeral. That night, a prison parolee, Benjamin Lorenzo, shot and killed her husband for $11 in his wallet. I'm here to make sure that Benjamin Lorenzo pays for his crime and that he pay with his life. The state asks that Benjamin Lorenzo be sentenced to death. Heather Kingsley for the defense. Your Honor, Benjamin Lorenzo learned from his prison experiences to keep his nose very clean. But that hasn't stopped the police in this city from hauling him into a lineup every time someone else commits a robbery. Is it any surprise that he was finally picked out by a robbery victim as her attacker? But an extremely tentative lineup identification is all the evidence the state has against my client. That surely leaves a reasonable doubt of his guilt. Thank you, counsel. Call your first witness, Mr. Espinoza. I call Linda Marquez. When we got to the restaurant, Larry said, uh, Two bucks for valet parking were using the street, but uh, we couldn't find a space, except on a side street. It seemed so safe. There were all these cute little shops, and at seven at night, they were all still lit up. What time did you leave the restaurant? At about 11. We were the last ones out. The, the pianist kept playing all our favorite songs. The street was pitch black. So Larry said, I'll go get the car. Won't you talk to any strange man? Then he kissed me and crossed the street. But a man stopped him before he reached the car. It looked like someone just asking for directions until Larry cried out. What did you do? I froze for a second. Then I heard a shot, and Larry just, just collapsed. I screamed and ran over. I was afraid he was going to shoot me too, but that, that animal just kept, was too busy looking for Larry's wallet to notice me. Do you see the man who shot your husband in this courtroom? Oh, yes. It's him. Let the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant, Benjamin Lorenzo. All right, what happened then, Mrs. Marquez? The thief ran away, and I held Larry until the ambulance came. The doctor said he died instantly. He didn't feel a thing. Like I'm supposed to be grateful for that. God, when I think of him in my arms and his blood pouring out on the pavement, <laughs> Ms. Marquez, just take a moment to collect yourself, ma'am. <laughs> Bailey, Patricia, would you bring her a glass of water, please? Thank you. Hey, why don't you ask her what the robber had on? I mean, they didn't find no clothes like she said when they searched my place. I'm the lawyer, Mr. Lorenzo. I'll decide what to ask. 
Give me a break, lady. I could go to the gas chamber for this. So why don't you save the I'm the lawyer speech, okay? Because it ain't like you're some public defender. I'm paying you. And you better believe I expect my money's worth. I'm giving you much more than your money's worth. Oh, yeah? I guess. about the cop who arrested me? You giving him more than his money's worth, too? And did you give the investigating officer a description of the man who shot your husband? Yes. He was wearing a stocking over his face, but I saw him very clearly. I knew I'd recognize him if I saw him again, and, and I did at, at the police lineup. Thank you, Mrs. Marquez. You witness, Miss Kingsley. While you were at the restaurant, Mrs. Marquez, did you celebrate with a cocktail or two? Just one. Perhaps a bottle of wine with dinner, some after-dinner drinks? We had some champagne and, and a tiny little glass of Grand Marnier. It was a gift from the maitre d' for our anniversary. It was our 15th that evening. So when you left that restaurant, you were drunk? No, I had some drinks, but I was not drunk. Tell me, how far away was your husband when he was attacked? Like I said, across the street. Then how could you possibly have seen the robber well enough to identify him? I told you, I ran over. I was standing right next to him. On a pitch black street with a stocking over his face after you'd consumed a good deal of alcohol? Tell me, what was he wearing? Jeans, a red shirt, a, jack a, a, a black leather jacket, short, with metal studs. But the police never found clothing matching that description at Mr. Lorenzo's apartment, did they? No. But of course, he'd get rid of it. I have nothing further, thank you. I'll redirect, Your Honor. You may. Was the man who shot your husband wearing a watch? Yes, a big gold one. It looked expensive. I, I told Detective Prim that when I made my statement. Oh. Watch like this? Yes, that's it. Where the hell did they get that? I object. If that watch can be linked with my client, then the district attorney had a legal obligation to inform me of this before the trial. Your Honor, I plan to link the watch directly to Mr. Lorenzo with my next witness, and I'll explain why I wasn't able to inform counsel prior to the trial. Well, I'm going to overrule the objection at this time. The watch has not yet been offered in evidence, but Ms. Kingsley may renew her objection if and when the watch is offered. Any questions? No, Your Honor. Well, call your next witness, Mr. Espinosa. I call Detective Prim. police officer who investigated the Marquez shooting. The prosecution has established that Prem is an experienced homicide detective. ...into our computer. Gave me a list of possible suspects. Based on what? Well, based on physical description and uh, prior arrests or convictions for armed robbery following that M.O. How many suspects did you bring in for questioning? Oh, about 40. Well, anyone on the list who didn't have an airtight alibi at the time Mr. Marquez was shot. And we put them all in lineups and brought Mrs. Marquez in uh, four times, I think. Describe the lineups. Well, typically there are eight men in each lineup. Four suspects and four officers of roughly the same physical type. Now, Mrs. Marquez picked out Lorenzo, no trouble at all. And what action did you take on the basis of her identification? Well, we booked Lorenzo, then we obtained a search warrant for his apartment, but we didn't find anything to link him to the shooting. No wallet. No gun, no studded leather jacket, and we didn't even find the watch. That's what started to bother me. Well, please explain what you mean. Well, when we picked up Lorenzo, he wasn't wearing a watch, but I noticed a line on his wrist that had not been tanned, suggesting he had worn one. Now, Mrs. Marquez said in her statement that the watch looked expensive. Now, I've run into guys like Lorenzo long enough to know that they just don't dump expensive watches. They pawn them. Did you pursue this possibility? Yep. And I located the watch this morning at the Majestic Pawn Shop. Now, here's a copy of the agreement between the shop and Lorenzo. It's got his name, address, driver's license number, signature, and, by the way, the shop owner identified a picture of Lorenzo. Uh, Your Honor, because this evidence just came into my possession, I had no time to inform counsel. Um, I would like to offer the watch and pawn agreement as exhibits one and two. I object! Sit down, Mr. Lorenzo. Only your counsel is permitted to address the court. What counsel? I'm firing her as of this minute. I'm taking over for myself. How can I get a good defense when my lawyer is this cop's lover? 
Detective, for the time being, you may step down. Uh, Mr. Lorenzo, before we proceed further, I want to clarify the issue of your representation. Fine. She ain't representing me. She's fired. Well, you have a right to do that, Miss Lorenzo, but it would be extremely difficult for another lawyer to step in at this late date and offer you an adequate representation. I don't want no new lawyer. I'm defending myself. Uh, sir, attorneys spend many years learning their craft. Um, it really is not advisable for you to proceed without legal counsel, given the fact that if you should be convicted, you'll, you may face the death penalty. Judge, last time I was in the pen, I learned that the warden would let you off other duties if you were working on your case, you know, appealing it, whatever. I spent a lot of time working in the prison law library, and I learned a lot. Enough to do the job for myself, and even if I ain't as good as a real lawyer, it'd be a lot better than having one who gives all my secrets to a cop boyfriend. Your Honor, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to sit by while Mr. Lorenzo slanders me. I have never discussed any aspect of his case with any policeman, and I would be happy to say that under oath. What? You gonna deny you and Prim have something going? Detective Prim and I have dated. But that has nothing to do with this case. I repeat, I have not passed any information to him. I want to prove she did, Your Honor. The only way Prim could have found out about that watch was through her. Do you know anything about this, Mr. Espinoza? No, Your Honor. The only thing I know was what I said. Philip gave me the watch and the pawn agreement when he got here this morning. Now, that was the first I heard about it. Did you know about the relationship between Detective Prim and Miss Kingsley? Not officially, no. Miss Kingsley, I realize you've not been a member of the bar for a very long time, but surely you must realize that a personal relationship with the police officer investigating your client's case presents a potential conflict of interest, which should be disclosed to your client before you undertake to represent him. Your Honor, my relationship with Detective Prim did not start until after I agreed to represent Mr. Lorenzo. I thought that the police work was finished. I'm sorry if Mr. Lorenzo feels that there is a problem, but in my judgment, there was no conflict. Well, how do you explain Prim walking in here with some new evidence he could only have gotten from you, baby? I don't know what you're talking about. I never saw that watch before in my life. Your Honor, I want to prove she ain't telling the truth. Well, I've, I've heard enough. Let the record reflect that the defendant, Benjamin Lorenzo, has dismissed Heather Kingsley as his counsel, and the court has given him permission to proceed representing himself. All right, let's uh, proceed. Your Honor, I would like to request that I may be able to leave the courtroom now. Oh, no, you don't, sweetheart. Because, Miss Kingsley, you're going to be my star witness. I can't believe this. Lorenzo says the only way you could have found out the watch about the watch was through Heather. If he's right, that makes the watch inadmissible. I hope he's wrong. I hope you weren't that stupid, Philip. Please take the stand, Detective Prim. And remember that you're still under oath, sir. Uh, Mr. Lorenzo, I believe you raised an objection about having the watch and the pawn agreement admitted into evidence. I'm going to reserve my ruling on that objection until I find out more about the circumstances under which this evidence was obtained. See, I don't think it would just occur to Mr. Prim here where to go look for a watch in Hawk. You go out with my lawyer, right? Sometimes, yes. You guys sleep together? Objection! That's completely irrelevant! Overruled. I think it goes to the depth of the relationship. It is relevant. Thank you, Your Honor. I repeat, you two guys sleep together. Yes. So, little lady told you I pawned the watch, didn't she? No. Well, how'd you know about it then? I had a hunch. You had a hunch? You had a hunch. Did you also have a hunch where to look? I had a picture of you. I took it to pawn shops to see if they'd remember you. Really? Well, must be hundreds of pawn shops in this city. You go to all of them all by your little self? No, not all. When did you start looking? This morning. How many did you go to? Just the ones closest to your house. I got lucky. You're a liar. He's a liar, Your Honor. I want you to tell him that you're going to put him in jail if he don't tell the truth. Uh, Mr. Lorenzo, I'm trying to be lenient about your procedural lapses. Uh, you, I'll tell you this once, though. You cannot browbeat the witness. You cannot threaten him, and you cannot accuse him of lying. Fine. Fine. Then why don't you bring Heather Kingsley to the stand? I want to ask her. Objection! Now, I'm right in the middle of my case. 
defense has no right to interpose its witnesses. Well, under the circumstances, Mr. Espinosa, I want to know more about how this evidence was obtained on this motion to suppress. So you can step down again, Detective Prim and Ms. Kinsley, you take the stand. Who are you? My name is Heather Kingsley. I'm an attorney. I was your attorney. Last month, you called our offices from the city jail, and I was sent over to talk to you. You retained me as your counsel. I gave you a check for 1200 bucks, didn't I? Yes, you did. You said that was all the money you had in your bank account. Yeah, that's right, but you said it wasn't enough. Am I right? Yes. So I gave you something else. What was it? A pawn ticket. Which I said was for what? A piece of gold jewelry worth a minimum of $5,000. Yeah, what else did I say about the ticket? You said I could get the jewelry with the pawn ticket and $500. Yeah, so you took this ticket and you walked it on down to the pawn shop and you checked out the goodies, am I right? No, you're wrong. I didn't do anything with that ticket. Except give it to your boyfriend, Prim. No! Then where is it? It must be in the office safe. I... Wait, let me, let me think, okay? I... You gave it to me and I put it in my briefcase. And then I went to a hearing, and after that, I went to the DA's office for a plea bargaining session, and then I went home. So I guess I didn't put it in the safe. Yeah, well, you still didn't answer my question. Where is it? I put it, I put it on my dresser with, with some receipts that I meant to go through, but I, I haven't had a chance to do that yet. So it must still be there. Yeah, well, this, uh, this dresser of yours... What room is it in? Wait a minute. Let me guess. It's in the bedroom. Yes. Well, was, uh, Mr. Prim here ever in your bedroom? Yes. After you put the ticket on the dresser? Yes. When was the last time? Miss Kingsley, answer the question. Last night. No kidding. So how long was uh, Prim here in your bedroom? All night. So this morning, first thing, uh, Mr. Prim gets a little hunch to take my picture down to the Majestic Pawn Shop. That don't sound like no hunch to me. What do you think, Your Honor? You think I proved my point or what? Well, Mr. Lorenzo, if I understand your point, uh, you have proven it, yes. I don't have nothing else to ask. What about you, Mr. Espinoza? No questions, Your Honor, but uh, a couple of comments, if I may. Please step down, Miss Kingsley. Your comments, Mr. Espinoza? Your Honor, the attorney-client privilege doesn't protect information related to the payment of attorney's fees. Now, since Lorenzo paid part of Miss Kingsley's legal fees with that pawn ticket, she had no duty to conceal that fact, so it doesn't matter that Detective Prim discovered it. That watch is valid evidence. Well, Mr. Espinoza, Mr. Lorenzo, I want some time to review the cases in this area, so we're going to take a short recess while I consider the motion to suppress the watch and the pawn agreement. All rise. What can I say? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You made a fool of me. For what? For what is right. Lorenzo is a murderer. I had a good solid case against him until you decided to improve the evidence. If the judge declares this a mistrial because you're fooling around with uh, counsel here, if this gets thrown out, how about, how about you explaining that to Linda Marquez? <laughs> Benjamin Lorenzo's watch should be admitted into evidence. Judge Jake's rules in one minute. You've got a sore throat. Well, uh, excuse me, Your Honor. Mr. Espinosa, you know I can't talk to you unless the other side is present. Uh, yes, I know, Your Honor, but I spoke with Mr. Lorenzo. He said it was all right for me to meet with you. Oh, good. Then I'll tell you. I've considered your argument but I'm convinced that Mr. Lorenzo's constitutional rights were violated by Ms. Kingsley's relationship with your detective, so I'm going to suppress the evidence. Look, Your Honor, I've kind of been expecting this, so I've been out there talking to Lorenzo about a deal. 
Now, he knows with, even without the watch that Mrs. Marquez's testimony could send him to the gas chamber, so he's willing to bargain. So am I. Anything to get him off the streets. Well, good. Let's go back into court and put this on the record. Yes, Your Honor. Benjamin Lorenzo pled guilty to second-degree murder and was sentenced to 15 years in prison. He is eligible for parole in seven years. As a result of this case, Heather Kingsley ended her relationship with Philip Prem. Monday on Superior Court. I don't care how long ago it was. She... Superior Court is a Ralph Edwards student.